for you. Do we have any Queen fans in the house? Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three. You. Yeah. 
chandel in a pretty cabinet. Let them eat cake, she says, just like Mary Antoinette. A beauty remedy for Christian Kennedy. And at a time, an invitation you can't decline. Caviar with cigarettes, well-versed in etiquette. Extraordinarily nice. She's a killer. She never kept the same address in conversation. She spoke just like a baroness. A man in China, we tend to fish you better. But I can't suit if you're that way inclined. Perfume came naturally from Paris. For God, she could have cared less. Fastidious and precise, she's a killer.
Uh -huh. We have waited a long time to play for you, good people of Vienna. Welcome to One Vision of Queen. Tonight, we are celebrating, finally, after, what, five years now, some of you have been waiting. Thank you for your patience. We finally get to celebrate the incredible music of Queen together. Let's uh, have a little bit of a nostalgia together. Some of you maybe didn't know what to expect tonight. Maybe you uh, were waiting for a yellow jacket. Maybe uh, a mustache. Or a big curly peruke over there. <laughs> None of that tonight. Lots of people do that very well. And if you came dressed up tonight, we applaud you. We love the spirit. One more thing about tonight, it's a little bit special. Because, well, unfortunately, our fifth member, our keyboard player, fell ill suddenly two days ago in Linz. So he cannot be with us tonight, but we are four band members tonight. And you know, you know who else was just four band members for the first 10 years of their career? Queen! So tonight we're gonna have a good time the old fashioned way, celebrating the incredible music of Queen. And it goes a little bit like this.
It's a kind of magic It's a kind of magic
get used to living without, living without, living without you by my side. We have uh, come here to celebrate the music of one of the greatest bands of all time. And uh, we wouldn't be here tonight if it was not for Freddie Mercury. Let's hear it for him. And uh, I've become a huge fan of his over the years, and I've listened to the music that he made outside of Queen. Have you heard some of this? His solo music, his opera album. I think the classical people of Vienna would be proud. It's quite good. But I think um, it's fair to say that the music that Freddie Mercury made outside of Queen maybe lacked a little bit of that kind of magic, don't you think? The magic that he made with Roger Taylor, John Deacon, and Brian May. For example, Brian May wrote many of Queen's number one hits. Not only a master of the electric guitar, Brian also became a doctor of astrophysics. A big brain. And so he, uh, he takes these mysteries of the universe and he boils them down into beautiful little songs like uh, the song 39 from 1975 in which he imagined what it would be like to travel at the speed of light to a distant planet and then return to Earth. And then uh, many years later he would ask an even bigger question, who wants to live forever? That's one of my per personal favorites. But tonight, I would like to ask one question that we can answer right now. It's really maybe the biggest question of them all. It really puts the ass in astrophysics. Are you gonna take me home tonight, you fat bottom dog? <laughs>
a lot of shows on this tour. This is number 28, and uh, we go home tomorrow. It's been a wonderful time. We've played these songs now almost all 28 times. We played Fat Bottom Girls 28 times for the people of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And every time that we play that one, it's very fascinating for me to watch the audience in different parts of the world. When we play that one, in this part of the world, I see a lot of this. And I don't blame you, because I think Brian wrote that more for the Americans, yes? <laughs> yes, this is a deep cut. This was written more for the Americans. And you're not wrong, because any time that we play Fat Bottom Girls in the USA, you know what I get? Yeah! <laughs> Can you give us that? Yeah! Oh, music to my ears. Thank you for making us feel at home. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun on this tour. So much fun indeed that we are coming back next year, 2024, September 19th, same place. And uh, next time we'll have five guys for you. But we're having a lot of fun, just a four piece. This is pretty rock and roll, we're loving it. Now, for those of you who don't know, I did not grow up listening to Queen at all. I did not know who Freddie Mercury was, uh, probably until I was 20 years old at least. So anyone here tonight who's young or young, younger than 20, then you're automatically cooler than me. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember watching a movie when I was in my teen years, maybe 14, 15 years old. It was the early 90s. And I was watching a movie called Wayne's World. <laughs> You've seen this? 
So those of you who've seen the movie, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. There is a, a scene at the very beginning, as the credits, our opening credits are happening. Uh, very silly scene, but for me as a young musician, it was the song that caught my ear. I had heard all of these different kinds of music. I grew up playing classical piano. I knew opera, I knew rock, classic, gospel, country, rap, all these things. But I'd never heard so many different kinds of music all in one song before, and it blew my mind. And also, I couldn't decide just from listening if the singer was a man or a woman because at the beginning it's so nice and lovely and high and sweet. And then when I realized that the singer was a man at the end, I was like, huh, I, I'm gonna be a man someday and I have a high voice. And so I would like to thank once again, Freddie Mercury tonight for giving me the freedom as a young man to have a high singing voice. Thank you, Freddie Mercury. And now uh, I've come a long way since then, of course, and I often think about what kind of music are we missing today in 2023 because Freddie Mercury um, died at such a young age. And uh, I'd like to propose, uh, if he had lived longer, I hope, I wish that he would have recorded this next song. I'd like to play for you just one song that is not a Queen song. It was written by a man who uh, I believe spent some time in Vienna, and as one of your fellow country pe people, and one of uh, the writer of one of the most beautiful songs of all time, and this is what I imagine Freddie Mercury singing.
Shakes our love. 
Kentucky. Oh, you don't like polka? This is Austria, what's wrong with you? That's why you're here, right?
I mean, come on, Vienna. You guys are so fun to play for. Oh, my gosh! And uh, this is a Wednesday, right? Are you always this excited on a bank holiday? Wow, I'd love to see you on a Saturday. Maybe next time, make sure you get your tickets. They're available right now at eventum.de. And since this, is, uh, since this is the last night of our tour, there's always uh, some you know, silly things happening. I've got a, a thing on my piano. It says, Mark, open me after Radio Gaga, before somebody to love. Oh, well. Well, uh, I probably shouldn't have let, read that out loud, but anyway, it's from the crew. We have the best crew. Uh, we had a lot of the same crew the last time we were on the road in Germany, and uh, a lot of the guys uh, came back because we all had such a great time on the road together. Um, it's almost like a family, you know? I don't know. I, I, you, you all experience family. We experience family in a different way as touring people, and uh, they gave me this, uh, this thing. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, okay, well, I gotta give you a little bit of uh, context for this. This is an amazing shirt. Thank you guys. This is very thoughtful. Let's have a, a big round of applause for the crew. Sound, lighting, rigging, technicians, drivers, you know, managers. It's uh, a lot of work. This is, this is very special, and um, they're very funny, and they have given away a lot of the things that I was about to say to you on a normal night. Um, so I guess uh, I'm going to start by saying thank you for um, being with us tonight. It is an honor to end such an amazing tour in such a beautiful city of music and celebration, and uh, we thank you guys so much. I, I never imagined that sounding like someone else was anything special. <laughs> you know? I used to have my own band for a long time, for 12, 13 years. I was singing my own songs. And people everywhere we went, no matter where we were, every single time I would sing, people say, hey, you know who you sound like? <laughs> and. Um, you know, I got used to people saying that to me, and it's always obviously um, a huge compliment to be spoken my name in the same sentence as uh, one of the greatest performers and entertainers of all time, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Who is ultimately really the reason why we are here tonight. And um, this, this one guy in, in Alabama, USA, this a long time ago, he comes up to me and he says, hey man, you know you sound like that uh, Eddie Murray guy? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a beautiful gift. I will wear it with, uh, and I will cherish it, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. But uh, I am here more specifically because of Roger Taylor himself. Um, Roger Taylor, the drummer of Queen, the man who played the drums behind Freddie Mercury for 20 years, um, he had the crazy idea um, 12 years ago now to form an official tribute band to his band. And I don't know if anyone has ever done that before. If anyone may as well have tried it, it may as well be Queen because they're the greatest. And, um, and so, long story short, I was chosen to be the lead singer of that band uh, 12 years ago. And, and, uh, Along with a couple of the guys in this band, we all learned from Roger Taylor and Brian May directly. We worked with them for five, six years, and they taught us how to play this music for you in a live situation. And I think we do a damn good job, right? <laughs> and then, um, not too long ago, I was asked by Queen to um, to sing in the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. Did you see that? It was a very, very special thing for me. I will never forget it. But to think that it all started 12 years ago 
when I first realized that sounding like Freddie Mercury is something pretty cool. Um, when I auditioned for Roger Taylor for his official tribute band, and um, you know, I, I auditioned with my favorite Queen song, and it's the only gospel song that Freddie Mercury ever wrote, which is it's very cool for me because that is my background, that's the music that I come from, and um, to be able to sing this song every night, it's just, it takes me back to the beginning, it's a reminder of why I'm here, and we're gonna play that song for you right now, but we do need many, many more voices than we have here on stage. Can you help us with the choir? Okay, let's do it. piano player from Toronto, Canada, Mike Cohen. And I don't think you need any more proof tonight that this man sometimes, possibly, occasionally sounds more like Brian May than Brian May himself. From my hometown of Nashville, Tristan Avakian. This is one vision of Queen. Oh, 
on, we're gonna sing. Come on. Find me somebody to love. Oh, we got some singers. Well, we've been in Germany now for over six weeks, and I still, ich spreche kein Deutsch still, but I wonder, this noise that you're making, this means that you want more, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> now, only because you get to be at the very last show, we are, Tristan and I are going to try something that we have never done before. We have never even practiced this before. But we're going to try it. He's going to play the guitar. I might join him on the piano. But uh, this is a song that I love to perform every now and then on a special occasion. And it's been a long tour. My voice is a little tired. So if you guys could help us, that would be great, okay? Okay? You, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Hey. 
There's no time for us There's no chance for us What is this thing that builds our dreams Yet slips away from us Your big disgrace, pinging your band all over the 